Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome to another Harry Potter Winter Readathon video. This time we are going to be reading together chapter number four, which released recently this Sunday on the 22nd. So I'm here to film my reaction and my decision along with you. So I'm going to place all of the other chapters of my videos down below in the description so you can follow along with me if you haven't seen chapter one, two or three three yet and my book choices. So let's go and open up chapter four and I'm going to read out to you guys. <laughs> Welcome to chapter number four. The whole school including the staff seemed to be a bit shaken up about the writing on the castle's wall. Some even cared about Mrs Norris although the majority were glad of the temporary break from the sneaky little monster. Filch has been haunting the castle looking as lively as Moaning Myrtle. Enemies of the air beware? What does that mean? Most teachers appear to believe this has to be a tasteless prank, insisting on not wasting time on such silly rumours and refusing to talk about the legend of the Chamber of Secrets, Cough Cough, McGonagall and Snape. Some students swore that already knew what this is all about, whilst others made plans on when and whom to ask about it. But they all had one thing in common, everyone was speaking about it. Have you already read a little about the Chamber of Secrets? In chapter one, did you select to join the book club with Hermione? I can't seem to recall anything about a book club from chapter one, so I'm not sure what this is about, but I'm just going to assume that I'm part of a book club, because to be honest, if I was lumbered with the chance of joining a book club, especially with Hermione, I would of course be a part of it. So yes, I am a member of the Book Owlery Club. So I'm going to select that one. Ah, the power of breeding. Because you already came across this legend by sheer chance too, you are one of the few students who already know a little bit about the Chamber of Secrets. You and Hermione feel run in. In some, the chamber was created by one of the Hogwarts founders, Salazar Slytherin, who did not agree with the rest of the founders about who should be admitted to study magic. Before he left, he made sure that the Chamber of Secrets could only be opened once, but his true heir came back to the school. Upon the heir's return, he would then open the chamber once more, unleash the monster within and purge the school of those who were deemed unworthy by Salazar. Ron looked as if he was hit by a troll's club. Monster, he said in a normally high-pitched voice. You don't reckon it can be a, a, a big spider, do you? Somehow you doubt you would be that lucky. No, if that's the thing you heard whispering before, it would be something much, much worse. There's only one option here to continue, so let's continue. It is the start of Christmas break. The Great Hall changes the enchanted ceiling to now occasionally float tiny snowflakes down onto the shoulders of the remaining students. A lot of your peers decided to go home for the holiday, but you, Ron and Hermione are spending it right here at Hogwarts. There are maybe a dozen stunning Christmas trees with little charm reindeer zooming around the branches. The silver suits of armour spontaneously erupt into a cheerful Christmas songs when someone passes them and the mountain tops outside often blend into the calm white of the sky. With everything going on, it's so nice to have the castle a bit quieter and relax for a couple of days. Not to mention the food is as amazing as ever. Maybe even a tad more delicious as some festive dishes were added to the menu just yesterday. So there's only one option here and that's let's continue. So naturally, after the Chamber of Secrets message has appeared and Mrs Norris has been petrified, all you three were doing was coming up with theories on who is responsible. One jumps to the conclusion that it is 100% Malfoy and has been acting aghast whenever Hermione brings up a point against his suspicions. During another one of these instances, Hermione puffs her chest and admits that she has come up with a way of finding out if Malfoy truly is the heir of Slytherin or not. Well, go on then, Bron waves his hands impatiently. She's explaining all about the Polyjuice Potion, not leaving the path out about how many rules you would break if you go ahead with this plan. For that it would allow you to change your appearance into any Slytherin and infiltrate their common room, hopefully get a Malfoy to boast about being the heir. But you said it would take a month. We can't wait that long. What if someone else gets attacked? She blushes and mumbles something about having the potion brewed in secret already for a while. It's almost ready to use if we so wish. A bit surprised, yet impressed, you mull over the idea. 
On one hand, it's something that you could do tomorrow and that would hopefully give you all some answers. Plus, you've always been curious to see how Malfoy, Malfoy acts around his own friends and about how the Slytherin Conran looks like. But on the other hand, you feel like there's so many holes into this plan, you're going to be breaking many rules and you've got a feeling that there's another way to go about this. You don't really think that Malfoy is the heir either way. Your friends look at you especially. So, okay, let's use the Polyjuice Potion or there must be another way. Let's use the Polyjuice Potion. So, Hermione jumps up eagerly and leads you to the aforementioned girl's bathroom. Ron looks visibly uncomfortable. Her cauldron stands right there in the middle of the aisle. When met with Quizzical looks, she explains that this is one bathroom everybody avoids going into because it's the one haunted by Myrtle. Thankfully, she seems to be absent at the time. Hermione sits down and adds a couple more drops of some thick black material to the cauldron. The contents of the cauldron bubble up almost to the rim. You take a step back just to be safe as you've been burnt one too many times before, but the liquid settles back down, changing the colour from vivid green to a more translucent shade. Oh good, sighs Hermione. According to her, all you guys need now are a few more herbs that should be available in the potions class cupboard, a piece of whoever you want to turn into come again, Ron exclaims in disgust, and to keep stirring this continuously for another hour. If you want to do this tonight, you better split up, so it's up to you which task you'd rather take on. Gather in the missing herbs, or stay and stir the cauldron. Let's gather some herbs. Or, the third choice is to retrieve a couple of house and crab and goil. I am definitely gathering the missing herbs. The only place you know where to get some of the listed herbs and potion ingredients is in Snape's collection. Thankfully you have your invisibility cloak, otherwise you're not sure what you would have done. Lucky near the dungeon entrance, the potions class, waiting for the current lesson, or fifth years perhaps, to end, you mentally ready yourself to get your sneak on. As the bell chimes and the students slowly start to leave the classroom, you masterfully navigate between them, sneaking towards the cabinet for which to grab the missing ingredients. Reading prompt. Read a book with plants on the cover. It can be anything from a tree to a flower to an acorn. The mystic herbs are added. The potion turns mint green and the polyjuice potion is ready for the very last ingredient. Hermione has a Slytherin girl's hair that she has plucked from her cloak during one of their shared lessons. Ron has got crab and you are left with goyle. As you add your hairs into the vials, the potion turns a muddy brown and thickens up to the most unappealing lumpy consistency. Yikes. Better hurry up, because these work best when fresh. Bottoms up. Hermione runs into the cubicle and insists that you go without her. Not having the time to reason with her, you listen. By some dumb luck, you get spotted by Draco himself, just five minutes of wondering with slight panic that you will not find their common room in time. A part of the plan that you somehow forgot to think about. You follow him silently as he rants away about his most recent Quidditch practice and he dared to look me on the eye and suggest that I need to have a better lookout on my left. The guy couldn't find soap if I was in front of him, the state of him, I'll never understand how he is in Slytherin. You go down to the dungeons, you should have suspected the password is pure blood. It was actually a rather nice, calm looking surrounding, almost soundproof. You could see the water reflecting on the ceiling, it had the most bizarre soothing effect. The other students laugh and chat away, looking actually really friendly. After some more monologuing by Draco, you and Ron start to nudge him towards the right subject, the Slytherin air. However, at one point you must have said something that was the longest sentence that Draco had ever heard Goyle say, so he grows suspicious. Uh oh. In chapter 2, did you speak with Mr Weasley about his raise of Malfoy Manor? I didn't speak to him, so I'm going to select no, I didn't get a chance. You need to think quickly, speak in short sentences, frown a lot as if thinking is really hard, maybe talk a bit about food, try mentioning something that you think Draco loves, it shouldn't be too hard guessing his favourite activities or things to moan about. We have another reading prompt here which is to read a friend's recommended or favourite book. It could also be a book recommended by a book community member that you like. As Malfoy settles back into his elegant chair, seemingly convinced that you're acting normal, he gets back to the topic at hand. Well, that settles it. Malfoy isn't the heir. You turn your head towards Ron or Crab, who looks at you in return. His eyes suddenly widen before you could ask. You suspect why, because Crab's hair is suddenly starting to turn bright red and it's growing longer. Your time is up. You shoot up from the sofa and run for it. 
shouting a reply to Malfoy's question, hospital wing got a stomach ache. By the time you get to the first floor, you are almost back to your old selves. You turn towards the hallway where you hid your clothes to change, but Ron says he's going to check on Hermione and that he will meet you later. After you're comfortably in your own uniform, you turn to go back to him, but then you hear it again at the same cold whisper that made your skin crawl. After half a second of hesitation, you follow Sam. What if somebody was in trouble? The sound travels faster than you could run, however. Once you turn the corner, you are met with a grim view. In the middle of the dimly lit corridor is nearly Headness Nick's ghost, but he's got an odd shape to him and he is very clearly not his usual self. He seems petrified, and behind him lays a Hufflepuff boy from your year, and he looks as if he was turned to stone too. What do you do? Do you approach the scene or do you run before anyone actually sees you? You'll of course make sure that someone else does find them soon. Half the school seems to think you've got something to do with the Chamber of Secrets since you were the one to find Mrs Norris. It's going to be terrible if you found at another crime scene again. So you can't risk being seen near them alone or do you approach them? Hmm, can't risk being seen near them alone. I, well, I don't know because I feel like I wouldn't want to risk it. I think it would freak me out and I'd run away so I'm going to have to be like I wouldn't risk it. So you make a mental note to make sure that the victims are found but for now you need to not be seen nearby. It's for the best that you're not associated with the attack too and that's the last thing that you need. You just need to cross the courtyard and you'll be in the clear. Then you find someone and massively send them towards Nick so they can be found. Maybe you can tell Filch that you saw Peeves in a mischievous mood moving in that direction, which would definitely work. Someone, or something, crashes into your side with such force it sends you flying to the side. You take her one trying to point at whatever it was, but it takes another blow to your shoulder to realise that it's a bludger. What's it doing outside the Quidditch field, and why is it trying to kill you? You dance around between the mossy pillars trying to avoid it, as it zooms left and right, trying to hit you again and again. If you haven't broken a rim yet, you'll be lucky. You need to do something before you get knocked unconscious. Do you cast Protego or do you cast Reducto? I think I would cast Protego. Finally, now that you've got rid of the bludger, you push back and dust your robes, checking for any damage done, and when you hear a tiny half screech, half cry from behind the bush, you narrow your eyes suspiciously and move towards it, poking your one so that the creature behind he ups and jumps into a clearance. It's Dobby! Why you? Why does Dobby insist on getting you in trouble? It turns out it was Dobby's hope to maim you enough to get you out of the school grounds, even if it meant you were in need of a proper hospital. This elf has his priorities seriously mixed up, but he's just going to go and how you need to not be here and how you might be the person that is taken this time around, and that you're too valuable to the wizarding future to risk such a thing. This time around. Somehow it's very hard to be angry at someone who looks so pitiful. You try your best to calm Dobby down and see what else he knows about the Chamber of Secrets and ask what has happened previously. He doesn't seem to know much after all, but it strikes you. He's standing here even though he doesn't work in Hogwarts. How is Dobby here? From what you heard, Dumbledore has strengthened the security in the castle so much that even the teachers were having difficulty leaving and entering it. It seems that house of magic often can overcome any magical power as they're not seen as a threat. It seemed like you, it seemed to you like a massive loophole. Congratulations, you have completed chapter four. Make sure that you rest in your dorm until chapter five becomes available. So, with this time around, I have got two reading prompts for chapter number four. I have got the one to read a book with plants on the cover and the second one is to read a friends slash communities recommended book. So I will go off quickly to find those couple of books for you guys. So for the book prompt of reading a book with some sort of form of plant on the cover, I have gone for The Madman's Daughter by Megan Shepherd, And there are these leaves that are on the cover here. There's some here there's some here on the side and it says here it can be any sort of form of plant of like tree flower or even to an acorn so that's why I went with that and then next of all was to read a book that's recommended by friends or by people in the community and for this one I have put 
Marley and Me by Josh Grogan. I remember being recommended this book and even this movie. I'm told it's like really, really sort of like a heartwarming story and that is just really cute and fuzzy and it's lucky that it is on my Bacopoli TBR for the month as well but I just remember being recommended this book at the time which is why I ended up getting it and yeah so I'm, I'm looking forward to reading that heartwarmingly fuzzy story. So you have it guys that is the end of my chapter four and my two reading prompts I've chosen with it. I really enjoyed reading it along with you guys. I hope that you guys have too. If you are participating in this readathon then do let me know down below what books you chose for the reading prompts and which direction you guys went because there are different reading prompts for every different direction that, that you take so that's why I thought that I'd film my adventure and my sort of tbr as i go along with it so yeah let me know down below in the comments how you guys are doing what books you're currently reading what books you've recently purchased and if you guys are seeing this after christmas let me know what books you managed to get for christmas as well and how your christmases are going and i hope you are having an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are thank you very much for watching my video as always keep smiling keep reading and be happy my name is katie and I will see all of you wonderful, awesome people in my next video. Bye.